This is Penn Woods interviewing for the Oklahoma Living Legends. The date is March 1st, 1971, and we are visiting with Mr. Bert Cahay, C-A-H-A, who is uh, now in Tulsa with his uh, daughter and son-in-law. Uh, his son-in-law, Mr. Nevin Black, is with us as we do this and will be participating in this uh, interview. Uh, Mr. Cahay, was four years old at the time that his father made the run into Oklahoma. And from this point, we'll just start talking with Mr. Cahay, and we'll be uh, asking him uh, for his uh, background information. To begin with, Mr. Cahay, I would like to ask for you to tell, tell us who were your father and your mother, including your mother's maiden name, and where they came from before they came into Oklahoma. They came from uh, Europe. Uh, they migrated from the state of Nebraska <laughs> into Oklahoma prior to the, well, about the time of the run. Anyhow, they was in the run. Your father's name was? Uh, Anton Cahay. Anton Cahay. And more commonly known as Captain Cahay. Uh -huh. And uh, your mother's na maiden name? Was Anna Cherney, C A. C E R N E Y. Anna Cerny. They were Czechs. Uh -huh. Both natives of you of uh, Czechoslovakian country. Uh -huh. And where did they come to? On the Nebraska. Run? No, to. Where did they go to? Hmm? Where did they make the run to? Uh, in Canadian County, Mustang. In the Mustang. Well, Mustang area. Creek is where he settled. This is an area where a lot of Czechoslovakians settled. Yeah, that was a complete colony of Czechoslovakia in there, south of Yukon. There was all. And uh, even my grand grandmother and grandfather on my mother's side was in the in the race. This was your. They were all in the race too. Uh, I assume this was planned, that they would, uh, obviously, they planned that the, the Czechoslovakians planned to meet together in this area. Evidently they did, mm -hmm. because that's been their habit all over the United States, mm -hmm. uh, you, settled in colonies. Do you know it's, how these plans were formulated, how they got together and worked these out? I don't have any idea about mm -hmm. that part of it. Uh, there's a colony in Kingfisher County. Uh, some of those were in the race, but I'm not not familiar with any of them. There's a quite a colony there on Bison. Mm -hmm. uh, are any of your family still in Yukon or that area? That no, there's only the two brothers and a half sister is all there is left of the family. The uh, youngest brother lives at Wagner. Wagner. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other brother lives at uh, Pryor. Why don't you describe uh, Oklahoma City and your own town as you first remember them? My first, own town. Now, what do you mean? Well, wasn't you you, you were you were living in uh, you were living near Yukon, weren't you? I lived out there in the country yeah, on the you, homestead. Oh, well. But I didn't live in Yukon. You no. did not. Huh? Well, why don't you describe Oklahoma City when you first saw it? Well, about all there was there was uh, uh, cavalry of the United States Army. They were stationed there, down there on the river. I couldn't, I couldn't tell you just where because there wasn't nothing there but just the river and a brush. And they had made, uh, cut the underbrush out on those streets around there. Uh, there was a slab, I call it slabs, off of the saw log, set up there for a uh, federal building. And that was, the land office was also in there. And uh, other than that, I don't know, my uh, uncle, now, if I'm saying something that you don't want in there, you stop me. Oh. My uncle bought a pair of mules from the government there that had been uh, condemned or whatever they brought about the sale of them. 
that we were coming out out of Oklahoma City, my father and my uncle was driving these mules, big pair of black mules, and the bugle sounded for feed, and the mules went to their stall in the in the hitch rope and uh, get down. And the uh, man in charge says, put the head stall on them, or me feed bags on them. And they did, and the mules had the supper, and, and we had supper with the, I suppose it was a commanding officer, I don't know, he was telling their, everybody what to do. And that's about all there is of that. Was this at Fort Reno or Oklahoma City? Hmm? Was this at uh, Oklahoma, Oklahoma City? City yeah. Oklahoma City. <laughs> the, uh, did you get into Fort Reno, speaking of the military baggage? Did I get into Fort into Reno? Into Fort Reno. Did you see it during the early Yes, days? I've seen Fort Reno, but I don't know anything about it at all. It was in and around there, but uh, I don't know any of the particulars around mm -hmm. Fort Reno other than a big black mule that was always into some kind of devilment. He'd been retired and was called a sergeant. And uh, that's all I know about Fort Reno. The, um, how many, um, I, I had a uh, visit with someone on tape about uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago who said that uh, his uh, or woman who said her father was offered a uh, corner lot on Oklahoma City's Main Street for a team of mules. He turned it down. Mm -hmm. Isn't that uh, uncommon at that time? Well, uh, I imagine it would be because there's lots of lots of people took city lots there, you know, as their allotment, or their, that is, as their homestead. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and a lot was worth less than mules. Today. Yeah, yeah. That is, uh, well, that happened at Enid, Oklahoma, also. The, the opening uh, of the Cherokee Strip. Mm -hmm. What uh, What are some of the experiences that you recall? You might, uh, uh, Nevin, be able to help us uh, to recall some of these. Uh, some of the early experiences that you recall following the run in the early days, dealing with your family or with uh, others that uh, you knew during this period? Well, what was your first home, Pops? It was out there on the <clears throat> homestead. We lived in a tent uh, the first year, and Father built a, a rock house, and we lived in that till they moved away from there in 90. Now, I'm not sure about this, whether it was 92 or 93. Moved to the Potawatomi country. And that's uh, that's about all there is there. Did you ever live in a sod house? Sir? A sod house. Did you ever live in a sod yes, house? Yes, we lived in a sod house. I remember very distinctly. My mother would take a candle and go around the walls looking for centipedes and ground rattlers, they called them. And if she didn't find any, she'd put my brother and I to bed. And Dad, he'd take a circle out around through the yard with his Winchester. And that's, uh, that's about all there is of that. I remember one time in a tent, they, uh, somebody that was laid on to that uh, ranch outfit over across the Canadian there, <laughs> some of them renegades shot 26 holes in our tent. And uh, Dad, he got out there and played with his Winchester a while. They never did bother around there anymore. Who were these renegades? Hmm? Who were these renegades? Who was the renegade? Who were these renegades, yes. Well, we suppose they was off of that ranch. I think they called it the Williams Ranch over in the Chickasaw country. All of that country in there, where we homesteaded, was uh, summer grazing land for this ranch office. In other words, these were not 89ers, but people who had grazing. Oh, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. The, uh, 
What uh, could you describe how a sod house is made and what it's like? Well, to start with, they had what they called a rod sod plow. And they'd plow just about that deep, about three or four inches deep. And that sod would fall over, they'd lay down a board. And that sod would fall on the board, and then they'd carry that board over and lay it on the wall and go back and get another and until they got it up to where they wanted. Then they fixed an arc with whatever they could fix and they laid sod up there for and if there was any old hay or something like that, old grass, well they'd put that on there and then put the sod on top of it. How uh, uh, boards form the, the uh Farm the roof, internal roof, to uh, support it. Is that correct? You used yeah. Put wards yeah. And, and covered them with the mm -hmm. sod. How uh, how deep and when it was completed, how deep into the ground was it? The sod house? Yes. It was sitting right on top of the ground. Right on top. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, uh, what? Uh, how did you heat it? Ordinarily. Well, it was just. Oh, common stoves of that time. Inside. Like cook stove. And mm -hmm. I think it was a, one time, I think I remember one time I was in one, I don't know who that one, they had a big fire built up in the middle of the floor. Mm -hmm. And a vent out, <coughs> vented the smoke out through the wall or roof, I forget which it was now. How did you uh, how did you finish it inside? Did you put plaster? There's no in finishing to it. Just the wood dirt. Just with the dirt. How long did you live in a sod house? Well, we lived there that spring and summer. When the spring rains come, well, they had to do something else, so they built a stone house. So you lived in a sod house for the better part of a year. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. How many of you were in the family at that time in this audience? Well, there was myself and my brother. Well, Ernest wasn't born until after they built the stone house. That's the third boy. Now, the one next, next to me passed away, a young man. And then Ernest was the third boy, but he wasn't born until in the 90s. Sometimes. There's your father and mother and two children then in the sod house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The, um, what, how much furniture did you bring down or did you have when you went to the sod house? Well, was, all I remember was a couple of, uh, no, there was four buffalo robes and two feather beds. That's all the furniture that I remember. And the stove. And the well, stove, yeah. <laughs> kind of a, I guess you'd call it a stove, yeah. Did uh, did they acquire those buffalo robes after they got there from, uh, they, did they kill the buffalo? No, they, they brought them the from Nebraska well with them. Okay, gone by then. They well, brought them from Nebraska with them. Nebraska. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> that's uh, so about all they brought were their household uh, supplies that they needed and these so buffalo just robes. Just very little of that. The, um, did you help build the stone house? Well, you were a little young. Uh, the, was the stone house was built with stone in that area, I guess. Well, as far as I know, far it was. I don't know. remember where they did get the, the mm -hmm. stone. But I, uh -huh. I know there wasn't any right close to her. How long did you live on this homestead? Well, I lived on that homestead, as I said a while ago. It was either 92 or 93. 92 or 3. Mm -hmm. The, uh, what, uh, what did you, uh, what was, did you, kind of farming did you do on the homestead? Well, there's a small grain, corn, and wheat and oats. That was a, mm -hmm. father owned the first self binder in Canadian County, as well as the first wheat drill. Mm -hmm. First wheat drill caused a, quite a neighborhood argument because they couldn't, bear the idea of that vacant space between the, the roads yeah. that had been used to yeah. broaden. 
Did you sell it? Did they sell it in '93, or did they just move away? I mean, did uh, did they did they sell it after that? Or they yeah, they sold it in there somewhere. And I I don't know just what the the uh, what? Uh, where did they go then? Where did your family go then? We moved to Pottawatomie County near Kirkuk Falls. He bought a farm out there. And uh, <clears throat> well, I don't like to put this in, but I left home about 1904 mm -hmm. for various reasons. And I went over into territory. In the Indian territory? Indian territory. And uh, I made my living as best I could. Mm -hmm. You were 15 then, is that correct? Somewhere along so, there. Mm -hmm. What did you do when you went to Indian Territory? I went to work on the ranch there, the first... Where? In? Hmm? Cattle in, ranch. In what uh, area then? In uh, Seminole. Mm -hmm. And then I worked for the Cross Y. Uh, no, it wasn't a Cross Y. It was a Y ranch, a Cross Pitchfork. Lazy H, and uh, there's a horseshoe brand over there, and I don't remember whether it was a upside down horseshoe or or horseshoe bar. Mm -hmm. There was a bar over there too, so that's. And when I left there, I went to the Frisco, or rather come to uh, uh, Kingfisher County for a wheat harvest. That was in 1906. And uh, I worked for, the, for a cattle buyer there in Kingfisher County till 1908, nine, in 1910, I went to work for the Frisco. Mm -hmm. How long did you work for Frisco? 47 years. And you retired when? Sir? What year did you retire? What Federal? year did, when did you retire from Frisco? Oh, uh, no. <laughs> January 57. Mm -hmm. uh, where were you then? I was at Enid, Oklahoma. At Enid. Uh, did uh, this uh, couple who interviewed, who interviewed, uh, and was uh, he's a retired general agent from the Frisco, who was interviewing here? It's Mac Jones. Did you know Mac Jones? Mac, Mac Jones. Jones. Yes. No, Oklahoma I, City. I don't think so. He was a retired agent from the Fris general agent for Frisco. He was retired a couple of years ago. Though. Uh, while the, you were part, while you were working on these various ranches, was that when you knew Will Rogers? But no, I knew Will Rogers before I went to those ranches. Oh, well, you tell, might tell, tell us something. about your the first the first time you met Will Rogers. Well, it was on the old Mall Hall Ranch. I don't know how come me to be in that neighborhood, but uh, he was standing out there at the uh, oh, at the corner of the lot or whatever you call it. And uh, I believe they was a branding, but he was just standing there gawking. That's was he a known figure by that time? At that time, was he? No, he no, was, he wasn't. Yeah, I see. He wasn't. Uh -huh. uh, what uh, what uh, you were telling about uh, his comments? I believe dealing with uh, what was the. Uh, uh, you said was one of his favorite comments that he made uh, 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 on uh, is on roping. Yeah. Why don't you tell us that? Well, all right. It's just a difference between a lot of difference between playing with a rope and working with one. Mm -hmm. That's that's all it was to that. He liked to play with one. Me? He did. No, I. No. Oh, he did. Yeah. Yeah. He was always twirling a rope somewhere or another. The last time I seen him was with, with the Fowlers in St. Louis. And he was playing with the rope then, only 
playing with two of them. Mm -hmm. And a little better known, too, wasn't he? Yes, he was better known. I say he was. <laughs> uh, why don't you tell us uh, of as many uh, as many stories, and maybe, uh, uh, Nevin, you can help us on this, uh, as many of the experiences that you can recall of Will Rogers, that where you have seen him or where you have had any personal contact? Well, there wasn't... Uh, there wasn't any uh, anything of any consequences any time that I've ever uh, maybe seen him ride by or see him at some place, but I never had any dealings with him to to speak of. When you saw him first on the Mulhall Ranch, would did it occur to you that he might someday be Oklahoma's most famous uh, son? Well, no, he was just another human being to me. That's all it was to it. I didn't. Uh, in fact, I didn't uh, consider him as well as I did some of the fellows that was out there on the saddle. Well, he was just down there gawking, and well, I didn't. The yeah, others were working. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of them were working. Well, he was working, and while later became his trade partner. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, who are some other uh, who who are some other uh, of the early people of. Uh, who are a part of Oklahoma history that you know or have seen or met? You told about the Mulhall girls. Yes. Uh, Tell us about well, the Mulhall girls. What about them? Well, you, did you know them? Well, I knew who they was, yeah, but to the, the, the personally acquainted, no. Mm -hmm. I, I, uh, really, I didn't know the younger girl. I've seen her. I've seen Lucille several times. The last time I seen her was at a county fair there at Enid. I think that was in 1906. Along there somewhere. You knew Zach Miller, is that right? Sir? Did you know Zach Miller? Yes, I knew Zach Miller. Tell us something about him. Well, there ain't anything I know about it, uh, the Millers that I can... Uh, they only he cut a quite a figure in the, in his day, and uh, he claimed his saddle was had cost uh, oh I forget how many thousand dollars it was. But, uh, other than that, I knew George. That was the youngest one of the boys. Just a partial acquaintance. In fact, I was in his neighborhood the morning that he had that wreck up there and killed himself. I was over at Blackwell. And then uh, Joe, the oldest one of the bunch, he died there on the ranch. And that's... You've seen the show, haven't you? No, I never did see the show. You never saw the show? Mm -mm. With you? You stayed in the White House there. Oh, yes, I stayed in the White House there at the 101 Ranch. Yeah. That's about it. <laughs> well, it was just a big, what do you call it? <laughs> Two or three story building, pretty well square. And uh, the biggest punch bowl I've ever seen in my life. Is that right? And it was in a separate room, and there was only a walkway on each side, the room for the bartender over here and, and the people to walk by on this side. And other than that, I don't know anything about the... What did they serve, using the punch bowl? Well, whatever they could bring up out of their brush without getting caught with it. <laughs> <laughs> It wasn't legal then, was it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, uh, There's one thing more I might mention there. I was over to Ponca City one night and was going out to the ranch to do a stag party. And uh, back in those days, a black hat and a blue serge was a deputy United States Marshal's uniform. Well, somebody spied me and put out the information that 
of the United States Marshal and come down there breaking up the party. <laughs> and it's you. <laughs> uh, Did you ever have any uh, uh, in your various things in, in these early days, did you, did you have any harrowing situations, any dangerous situations that you can recall that might be of interest? You think no, unless you could. Outside of that one? <laughs> getting thrown off a horse and drug away. I was unconscious for about 36 hours from being thrown off of a horse and that foot. Happen? That happened in uh, Pottawatomie County. Mm -hmm. What uh, what was Pot County like? At the, were, was Sha what was Shawnee like at that early those days? Now that was about 1910, if I correct. Oh, 1910. That was 1904. Oh, 1904. 1904. 1904. Excuse me, 1904. I'm sorry. Yeah. What was uh, what was Shawnee like in 1904? <laughs> well, I would just say it was a country town. That's all it was. The railroad was starting to build their shops there, and the building of the railroad wasn't completed through there, but uh, it was operating. And uh, that's about all I can say. What about Seminole? You were in there, weren't you? Seminole? Yes. You mean the city of Seminole? Yeah. Well, that didn't come in till, come in till uh, way. It was after statehood, if I remember right. Mm -hmm. Well, there was just a sidetrack there is all I knew, and known as Beccasuki. Mm -hmm. You weren't in uh, Seminole at the time of the oil boom, were you? No, I wasn't. I haven't been around no, Seminole any at all. That is since it's been a town. Mm -hmm. What were some of the problems of the railroads in those early days? You were with Frisco so long. Well, high waters and muddy tracks and uh, jip water, which was a very uh, bad feature of a bringing about boiler conditions. And that's about all. Were passengers your main income then, rather than freight? Was it what? Passengers rather than freight your principal income? Yes, it was it then in the early days, because that was about the only means of transportation other than walking. Mm -hmm. The, uh, what, uh, uh, how big a passenger cars would you have going through, uh, uh, in, in the heyday of the railroad? How, how, how many cars would you have? How many passengers well, would you have? Well, back in those days, about five or six was about the most you ever seen on, uh, coal oil lamp hanging in each end of the coach, maybe, and, uh, did they have diners? Yes. They brought about diners as such as there was. The, uh, can you, uh, uh, do you think of anything else as we go along, Evan? Well, uh, no. um, of course he knows all that history. And that. Tell them about when the diesels came. Well, that's too recent. No, that's all right. It's all about it. Is. Well, he was the first one to be checked out on a diesel in the end. You were the first one to be checked out on a diesel. Tell about it. Tell about it from the beginning. Well, <laughs> I don't know what there is to tell about yeah. well, any more than uh, uh, instead of handling 30 or 40 cars, we were handling 175 and 200 cars. How, to, to what extent did that, in, what was your job at that time? Operator, engineer. How or, would how would that uh, uh, to to what extent did that increase your workload? Adding that many cars, <laughs> what were the problems? The additional problems. <clears throat> the only thing that it increased was the obligation because we had three and four units to look after instead of just one. When they got the diesel, was it? They had more cars, they just put another unit on there. And of course that made the obligation greater for us to look after and keep going. 
When was the first automobile? What was the first automobile you ever saw? Where, where, where did it happen? Do you remember? Well, the first automobile I ever seen, I think, was at Shawnee. It was a chain drive, if I remember right. Then I think the next one I seen a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> out there at Prague owned it. Okay. Now, he couldn't get around over the country for ski scaring the horses. <laughs> Thought you told about uh, uh, the oxen teams they had in the early days. Oh, well, yeah, that was a common thing, oxen teams. Tell about it. A lot of people who listen to this tape uh, have never seen an oxen. Well, there isn't anything anymore than it hitch two or three yoke onto a wagon and start out. And we had, there was one fellow that I, I didn't know him by name. He freighted out of Oklahoma City. He had three yoke of oxen. And <clears throat> he was always on the move on, in daylight. He freighted out of Oklahoma City. He had three yoke of oxen. And <clears throat> he was always on the move on, in daylight. But when we come getting pretty close to dark, he done hitch his oxen and turn them out on the grass. Did you ever see oxen or mules uh, mired in the mud on the roads? Many and many a time. Could you describe that? Well, I don't know what the devil to describe. It's <laughs> up deep in mud. Yeah. They, <laughs> they, uh, I've seen as many as 12 head of mules on one wagon trying to drag it out of the mud. So, I don't know. We, we'd, uh, the wagon boss made us put a chain around the rear axle instead of on the tongue, said you. Yellow Hammer, you pull the front wheels out from under that wagon and you won't have any way of getting it out. So we had to <laughs> crawl under there on our belly and put a chain around the rear axle and hitch four mules onto it. Your, uh, your dad ran a sawmill there. Uh, yeah. Did he, yeah. Use, uh, did he use horses or mules or oxen? Well, he had one. He had two, well, uh, there was two yoke of oxen come with a mill. Now, I don't know who owned it or anything, but they come with a mill. And uh, he got a colored man from somewhere, showed up there, that uh, he handled those oxen, but they didn't, uh, for some reason or other, they didn't, uh, didn't keep them very long. I don't remember. In fact, I don't remember what went with them. But you, they, you've seen farming change in many, many ways from uh, from the hand. Well, change. Uh, I guess that's what you'd call it. Yes, sir. And yes. You've seen railroading change. You've seen transportation change. Yeah, when I started railroading, I. Freight trains would consist of probably 20 cars, maybe five or 600 tons in weight, all wooden frames. And when I left, they was all steel. And uh, 100 to 150,000 capacity cars was a common thing when I retired. Same way with the motive power. And the passenger almost going out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the passengers on the Western Division has gone completely before <coughs> I retired. Mm -hmm. 
Lofty told the story uh, about the early day rustling the cattle, uh, what they did to the cattle rustlers, uh, how they put an end to the cattle rustling business in those days. Well, the Laird were open Winchester. <laughs> Tell us about uh, finding those, uh, those fellows. Oh, well, that was uh, horse thieves. Horse thieves. Tell about that. They uh, began to settle up that Seminole country, and uh, there was a colony moved in there. Oh, I think they were from Indiana or Illinois, somewhere up in that country. <laughs> All had good work horses, mules. Horse thieves had a, quite a play to. They organized the Anti Horse Thief Association down there. And they. Uh, Stranger come into we woke you one morning about sunup. Notified the deputy United States Marshal to investigate things up on the head of Gar Creek. And when I went up there, I was either five or seven hanging to one cottonwood limb. That was all there was to that story. So the anti horse thieves have been in work, and there were very few horses stolen. Well, from that, that on, why? Well, they never, never missed a horse. A horse starved to death for you to uh, get lost. <laughs> Bob, you told about the first airplanes you ever saw. Would you tell us about that? What was it like? Do you remember? And about your shirts, uh, your collars, how they changed the whole construction there. So you could look up at him. You remember that story you told me? Oh, 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 yeah. So I didn't see the airplane then. Oh. But uh, when the, the, the uh, Wright brothers first began to fly, and they come out, they was wearing those celluloid and linen collars on, on the shirts, and they cut a half moon out back here in the collar so that they could throw the edge further back to <laughs> see the plane going over. Now they was, oh, they was advertised all over the papers. A collar is built so that yeah, you can look yeah, at the plane. Yeah, they were detachable from the shirts, you know. Mm -hmm. Pops, you told about the uh, style of, uh, of the steel stirrups or the, uh, that, the, uh, that became popular over there. Uh, tell us about that. How come that didn't stay? The popularity well, uh, waned on that. <laughs> <laughs> Only thing I know, there was a young fellow, he had steel stirrups on his saddle and was struck by lightning. And it melted that steel stirrup, killed him and his horse, and melted that steel stirrup. And from that on, everybody put wooden stirrups on their <laughs> saddles. Threw away the steel stirrup. Now you've told about these peddlers that come into, came through oh, the territory. Right. Heck, that was a, uh, those, uh, well, they called them line riders at that time. Uh, peddling, uh, well, they were supposed to be missionaries, selling Bibles and theological uh, literature, and if there's anything loose, why, they took it too. Eh? <laughs> well, then they had some of these guys that would come through with these old uh, wagons that had every every article almost uh, imaginable. And oh yes, the peddlers. Peddlers, yeah. Yeah, yeah they'd be selling, and they'd, they'd trade whatever commodity they had in the wagon for. Anything the farmer had, chickens, cows, or pigs, or whatever it was. They put on quite a show, didn't they, when they get into town? As a rule, yeah. Mm -hmm. As a rule, yeah. Now, uh, tell something about the kind of a demonstration they put on. Well, about all it was would be a sale talk, and I'm not... Oh, these were, these, this was before the days of these uh, entertainers uh, that, that would uh, 
Well, this was. I was thinking of the say of the peddler in yeah. Oklahoma. You know the movie Oklahoma. Oh yeah. It's a, it was the takeoff. The what? The movie Oklahoma. They had the oh, peddler uh, played such an important part. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't know. He uh, represented the. Yeah. Yeah. How accurately he did. Uh, did you see the movie Oklahoma? Yeah, but it's been so long ago. Yeah. I've forgotten practically all of it. Uh, Perhaps you remember the, uh, uh, did you know uh, Pawnee Bill? Oh, I'd seen him a number of times, yeah. Tell us about Pawnee Bill. Well, Babe, but one thing that I recall that I can tell about Pawnee Bill, and that was after I started railroading, we was in the sidetrack at Pawnee, And I don't know, I'd been off for something or another. Anyhow, I started to put in a fire, and Pawnee Bill had a, a boy, oh, I'd say three or four years old, in his arm. And he says, this dude wants up in that cab. Can he get up there? I said, yeah, hand him over here. I showed him in the cab, and, and then he went out, and he said something to Pawnee Bill, but I didn't get what it was. Well, that, that's the extent of it, of course. I, I've seen him, well, the first time I seen Pawnee Bill was in, in Canadian County. Uh, showed up there and was on the old homestead. And he, I don't know what his mission was or anything, but he took after me and I, I run and hid from him. Why? Uh, I didn't know. I didn't want to have nothing to do with him. He didn't look good to me. He had on a leather coat with a fringe on his sleeve. Uh, of course, back in those days, we youngsters were pretty uh, suspicious of most anybody that we didn't know. Did you ever see the Pawnee Bill show? No. His Wild West show? No. Did you ever see Buffalo Bill? No. Did you, uh, did you see your little Dr. Angelo Scott, did you, whose voice you heard tonight, or Dennis T. Flynn? <laughs> no, what? Den Dennis Flynn was <laughs> the territorial congressman. Hmm? Dennis Flynn was later the territorial congressman. I remember when he was elected. My father campaigned for him. Is that right? The, uh, uh, but you, but you did not know him yourself. No, 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 I didn't. The, um, did you know uh, Senator Robert Owen? He was Eastern Oklahoma, but uh, did you, did the one of the original senators? Did you know him? No, I didn't. I knew of him, but I didn't know him. Mm -hmm. Among the uh, early, well, of course, you went over to Shawnee uh, in the, that area uh, in the early 1900s. Um, can you think of any other people you either knew or met? Oh, did you see the did you see the Teddy Roosevelt parade, 1903 in Oklahoma City? The Teddy Roosevelt parade, the the Rough Rider parade. That no, Teddy no, I didn't. I was uh, way down in the territory way down there close to Teleco. Mm -hmm. Teleco. Mm -hmm. Did you uh, did you know any of the older Indian chiefs? No, I knew some of the Indians uh, that was uh, outstanding like uh, I don't know what they uh, what their authority or how extensive it was, old K. N. Kinkie and his brother, and I think they were Cherokees, but they lived in the Seminole. And Uncle Henry Jones, <coughs> I think he was a second fox. I wouldn't be sure about that. There was a, quite a family of them, and uh, they held a lot of land in Pottawatomie County.
Did you ever know Jim Thorpe? Yes, sir, I knew Jim Thorpe. Tell us about him. Well, that's all there is to You did not. Did you know him personally? Well, no. I've met him several times no. there at, the, at his father's farm. Mm -hmm. Well, father used to buy corn there off of his father's farm. I used to think that was the biggest, fattest Indian I ever knew in my life, that father of his. And, but uh, uh, I don't know that I ever talked with Jim Tharp, but I seen him there at the farm a number of times. Was that before Jim uh, went to uh, Carlisle yeah, and made yeah, All American yeah. back there in football yeah, yeah. there? Pops, you saw Tulsa when uh, when it wasn't more than a thousand people in here. Well, I didn't get much chance to look because, uh, well, I'll tell you the truth, the United States Marshal wanted to visit with me and I didn't want to visit with him. <laughs> <laughs> Good enough reason. <laughs> Yeah. You never dreamed that Tulsa would be uh, at 330,000 people at that time. <coughs> well, that was the last thing in my mind, anything like that, in those days. Uh, as the fellow says, if I had a full belly or the sign of, to fill it, why, that, that was as far as I was worried. We interviewed a man this morning whose father farmed the first hardware store, really the second, I guess it's one of the two hardware stores, uh, the uh, Lynch. Uh, did, you, uh, did you know the, either the Lynch or the Lynch hardware or uh, Hall, was it Hall who had Mr. the other? Mr. Hall who had the first store here. Did you know Mr. Hall? No, if I did, I've forgotten him. But there was one groceryman come over here and I don't know I believe he started at Enid but he moved over here and had a, a, a big business and I don't I don't know his was that later pops well, it was along about 1909 or 10. Oh, was it? Yeah. Yeah. Did you know any of the Desperados? Belle no. Starr was dead when you came along, wasn't she? And Henry? No, Henry died in 1915, wasn't it? Yeah, I remember him, but then uh, Belle Starr and that gang was all ahead of me. Did you know any of the Desperados? No, no. You know, there was one out there in western Oklahoma. I think, if I'm not mistaken, his name was Jim Yeager. Yeah. I may, I may be mistaken about that, but it runs in my mind that he was, he was a lone wolf. Do you know the Youngers? Young. When they were younger. Yeah, but I don't remember their era. You mean the younger brothers? Mm -hmm. Huh? Mm -hmm. Oh, hell, they was ahead of Jesse James's outfit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was long before my time. Way, yeah, I'm getting out of time. Uh, you knew some of the U.S. <laughs> Marshals. This one that uh, you well, knew real well. What was his name? He well, I knew Cordell there at Weewoke and uh, Bud Ledbetter. I think he died here in Tulsa. He was a county sheriff here, I think, in his later years and then uh, no uh, well, I can't think of that fellow's name that that uh, captured Bill Doolin at uh, Little uh, at, uh, Hot Springs you knew him did you know Chris Madison no did you know Bill Tillman Tillman that's, that's the guy I'm trying to think about okay. Tell us about Bill Tillman. Well, I don't know anything about him any more than I've seen his picture show, and uh, other than that, well, I don't believe. Well, I was over at uh, Pawnee right behind him, so the story goes, I didn't see it, 
He had bought him a Derringer, a 44 caliber, I believe it was. And he shot some fellow in the forehead over there and didn't even knock him down. He threw the damn thing in the ditch. <laughs> we interviewed Bill Tillman's nephew about two weeks ago in Did Guthrie. Uh -huh. Pops thought the world of Bill Tillman. Did you? Can you think of anything else about Bill Tillman? Huh? Can you think? tell us anything else about Bill Tillman? No, he was a, a roustous kind of a fellow. In fact, some fellows never talked very damn much. And they went on about their affairs, and uh, if you asked them anything, why, they began to look you over. <laughs> yeah, so they let that Bud Ledbetter. There's only one thing that I remember about him. He was always set his Winchester, the barrel of his Winchester, on the toe of his boot. Now, other than that, now all the rest of them, they carried sidearms. But if he carried sidearms, I never don't remember it. He always had that 44 Winchester. Bill Tillman's brother, Frank, ran a, kind of a gambling place, I believe, in uh, Guthrie. Did you know him, Frank Tillman? No, no. You did not no. know him? This no. was Frank Tillman, Jr. that uh, we uh, interviewed. Yeah. Now, you were in Guthrie way early there, too. Oh, yes, we were in Guthrie. Not, uh, were you there when the move? Where were you when the capital was moved from Guthrie to Oklahoma City? I was off down in the Seminole Creek country, somewhere down there. I don't know where. Mm -hmm. Did you uh, uh, did you know any of the uh, political notables in Guthrie? Did you know Bill Murray? Not personally, no. Mm -hmm. I've seen him and talked with him and all that, but say no, him no. Uh, did you? Can you think of any of the other uh, either early day uh, uh, politicians or else the territorial politicians? Did you did, uh, who were well known? Can you think of any that you knew personally? No, to, to, to be frank with you in that respect, I was way off out there, out of sight of civilization. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, <laughs> I wouldn't. Uh, I never had any occasion to come to town, and when I did come to town, I wasn't looking for politicians. <laughs> you didn't need any political favors, did you? No. <laughs> Maybe when you needed to see a marshal, it would have to have known some, wouldn't it? <laughs> did you, uh, was Judge Parker still, was he going, uh, was he still ruling the courts over there at Fort Smith? When well, he, <laughs> he died after after I was, but I never did know of him or seen him. I've seen a lot of fellows talk with a lot of fellows that did know him. And uh, this uh, Pistol Pete out here. Yeah. Tell us about him. We have him on tape. Well, he was a fellow, dates back to the Civil War days. His father was killed because some of that gang up there that in their neighborhood wanted uh, Kansas to come in as a slave state and they objected to it, or he did. And so he promised his father that he'd kill every one of them. And he succeeded in doing that. Kill the last one's bartender down in Texas. And uh, he died over here Orlando. Perkins, I believe. Orlando or Perkins, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's, uh, he's still living at OSU. He's still, yeah, his, his that caricature is. is still the, uh, yeah. he's still the mascot at OSU. Yeah. He was a, he was a, a tough hombre. There's lots of stories about Pistol Pete, almost as many as there are about Bill Murray. Can, do you know any of them, any of the... Uh, no, no, see, he was out here in this section, and I was practically across the state and the other. The times that you knew him or visited with him, did, can you think of any experience uh, about him that might be worth... No, I never did have any dealings with him, whatever. Only time I'd happen to see him be like at a county fair, maybe I'd say hello or or so, uh, it's just the same way as uh, uh, Henry S. Johnson over to Perry that passed away here a short time ago. 
never had any dealings with him. I've known him fraternally. I've known him for for years, but I never had any dealings with him. Do you know anything about him that might be of interest about Henry Johnson? No, mm -hmm. no, I don't. Mm -hmm. What uh, what seemed to be uh, from the uh, feeling of people that you were associated with? What seemed to be his problem in office that? Uh, that caused him to uh, be impeached? <laughs> well, as I remember him, what dealings I had with him, everybody was honest until they proved themselves otherwise. Then that was too late. That's what threw him out of, got him impeached. And if he took after them politicians, at first, well, I don't think it ever throwed him out, but he considered that there was honest people, and a politician is a damn politician. I, uh, <laughs> I think uh, he's covered a pretty good. Uh, this is excellent. Oh, it's yeah, yeah, hmm? this is tremendous. You didn't, you didn't really, tell us a great deal about uh, all the tents you saw in Oklahoma City. There were very few homes the first time you ever saw Oklahoma City, yeah. if any. Oh, well, no, there wasn't. It was a tent city. All tents. Yeah. Uh, That's probably hard to describe. It's kind of like a, oh, describing yeah. a mule, and yet when you start describing mules, uh, you said there's nothing to describe, and then when you start describing those uh, oxen getting the oxen out, it was tremendous. Maybe you can start off the same way on tents. Well, I might tell you a little... Uh, the first Indian scare I ever had was at Oklahoma City. How about it? Well, down there on the river, where this company of soldiers was, there's a street north and south, and east and west, and right over in here was that company of soldiers. Well, it was just brush was cut down, you know, just f for a tree. Well, Dad had some business there at the land office. I don't know what it was. Well, I was out looking for sites or some experience or something. And I got to this corner. Do you know about where that was? No, it was down there on the river somewhere. Yeah, yeah on the Canadian River. Yeah. Okay. And here come a, a big buck and a couple of squirrels behind him. I know oh, they was right up here. I don't know, I don't suppose it's over a hundred feet from where I was to where they was. And that buck, he grunted and pointed at me and them two squirrels come out in front of him and I don't tell you the race was on. <laughs> Who won? You, I guess, you're still here. <laughs> Dad had no trouble of keeping up with me the rest of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you describe that tent city when you first saw Oklahoma City? Describe it? Yes. You, you described the oxen very well after saying there's nothing to well, describe. I don't know what there is to describe about it, only the tents were set up here in yonder, and some of them were just covered wagon, and it wasn't all tents. Some of them just had covered wagons. And that's about all I can tell you. The... Uh, uh, you know, Oklahoma City jogs at Grand. Uh, you, you, you know, all uh, where the Tivoli Inn is and where the old Sears building was, and uh, the, the whole streets, all the north and south streets, jog at Grand because of the. Uh, I don't know anything. Uh, you're not about. familiar with that. I was going to ask you about the. Uh, that has to do with the surveys, not meeting. That, that's what that committee of 14 was for that uh, Dr. Scott was talking about on it. Take. Well, we've got just a little bit of tape left. You, can we think of another one, Nevin? It's, it's great. See, I haven't been around Oklahoma City any, uh, only just through there probably since about 1956, long there somewhere. And then I'd be going through there on a train or something like that. Would you tell us, you say, uh, in the early days, these streams, uh, it was impressive for you to tell me about these streams always had water in them, and now they're always dry. Yeah, there's, that's the truth. There's lots of, like the North Canadian, when I was a boy, it was 
big running stream. Now it's dried up, only in places. And oh, any number of creeks that I know around over various parts of the country, when it is a virgin country, that are dried up now. That was a running stream at that time. You had a lot of springs too in those days, didn't you, Pop? That well, dried up now. No, not in the western part of the state. There was a lot of buffaloes, but over in the eastern part of the state, yes, there was springs, especially when you get over in them hills. Did you see many buffalo? No, no, not out on the range at all. No, they were, see, they was gone. Yeah. I think the last, last herd of buffaloes was in 77, and I wasn't born until 85. The first attempt to build a power plant in Oklahoma City was 1890. That was C.G. Jones uh, who had the grist mill. Do you know anything about that, the first electric power plant? Jones. Uh, didn't he own the flour mill there, right. too? Right. That's Great. what I thought. Tell us about him. Well, <laughs> he was a big fella. Oh, not too big, but he had a, quite a punch on him. And down there at his mill, he, where he kept his horses, there was lots of pigeons. And the boys would gather in there and, and kill pigeons and get in a fight. And the old man slipped around and closed the gate where the boys couldn't get out and he come out with a buggy whip. And he broke up that fighting from then on and he told them all that they could catch pigeons, but there wasn't going to be no fighting. Do you remember the power plant? That they no, it I don't. It, did, it failed. It didn't last. Yeah. So, but I don't. Uh, I remember my mother and her sister sitting on the, the, uh, in the yard out there on the farm on Mustang. And I was telling about the street lights in Oklahoma City. They could see the reflection, you know, on the sky. And that's about all I know about that part of it. But a few years after that, after Mother passed away, and I was running loose around Oklahoma City, and uh, that's when Jones got his buggy whip. He didn't get me, but there were a lot of them that he did. The bigger ones that he was after anyhow. And not to come to that seven-foot gate there, and it was closed. Like, that was all he wanted. <laughs> you think anything? This has been an interview with uh, Mr. Bert Kaha Kehe. Kehe, Bert Kehe in Tulsa, Oklahoma, which has made it uh, on March 1st, 1971, at the home of his son-in-law, Nevin Black.